Hello everyone and welcome to the new video. In this video I would like to show you the feature of blockers, which is new in PySolver 3.3. Um, so first let me navigate to the spot where um, blockers are of particularly visible value. So for example here. Uh, so we have navigated to a node where um, the OOP player has made a bet on the river, it's an all-in bet, and we have to decide whether we call or fold. So when we look at the range of the OOP player here, we see both on the graph and in the range explorer bar that it's very polarized. He has value bets, which start with top pair, and bluffs, which are nothing. So basically, we are calling with top pair or better, folding anything belong below second pair. And then the question is which of the second pair we are calling. Um, and basically all hands which are between second pair and the king high are basically beating the all the villain's bluffs. So uh, the quality of the bluff is not decided by strength of our particular hand. It's more decided by um, how much of the bluffing or value range it's actually blocking. So let's look at this, this second pair and look at the strategy plus EV to see which of those hands uh, we are calling, which we are folding and what is the EV. So we can see that the best call is king queen, which is relatively high calling EV, then it's queen six then it's queen nine and queen eight and then queen jack and queen ten like queen six blocks some sixes but there are not really that many pairs in uh, in villain's range so and we beat all of them doesn't doesn't matter like like all of these hands beat the same bluff so we are wondering now okay why does certain of our uh, combos are such a good calls like king queen or queen six and some other are really really bad like queen jack or in particular like queen five so in order to understand it we have to look at the at the blocker effect uh, so the the old style i mean you could already see it before you could just look at the oop range and see that yes the the villain has mostly aces in his range and then he has got are we looking then he's got some air in here and this is pretty much most of his range so aces uh, sets and a little bit of some other hands and we could try to understand which of our hands is blocking it but now we have a shortcut for that so uh, we can click we want to see blockers for the in position player and here for each hand we see uh, how big percentage of a range it's blocking from the value range and from the bluffing range. So, so the way it's defined, we uh, define equity versus top and bottom of the range according to uh, some equity formula. And we can change this equity formula in here if we want different values in different spots. And let's limit our analysis to the second pair and see which of our second pairs are blocking the top and which are blocking bottom of the range and what we see that the king queen is such a good call not because of its high kicker but because the kicker is particularly a king so it seems that this king queen is blocking 20 percent of all value hands of the opponent and only blocks two percent of bluffs and if we look farther, we see that, for example, queen nine and queen eight. So basically, it looks like all the queens block approximately 12% of the value range. And queen nine and queen eight do not block any bluffs. So that's great. It means that we are more likely to see a bluff from an opponent when we, when we have those hands in compared to queen five, which is blocking. So it seems that the five is blocking a lot of hands in our opponent's bluffing range and likewise 10 and 9. 
and this is the answer like we could try to analyze it a bit deeper for example to see okay let's say that we look at an ace so we see that out of position player if he has an ace then this is a top pair uh, so of course these are value hands what's with a king so if we look at a king we see that also king is a very good card to have because if you look at the out of position range we see that his kings are mostly top pairs and very rarely some king high which is bluffing. Therefore it's good to have a king because if we have a king we block mostly value range and the same is about the queen. So basically our queen is like a second pair and basically our opponent will never bluff with a queen in this spot. So he's only betting here ace queen which is two pair, top two pair and queen queen which is which is a full house whereas for example nine is not particularly present in our villain range so doesn't block either but for example jack when we have a jack we block quite a lot of bluffs in opponent's range at least in comparison to how many of uh, top pairs we're blocking and if we have a five then we block a lot of nothing in opponent's range so this is the way we can look to try to understand a bit more how is our hand blocking top or bottom of the range of the villain which is mostly useful in this spot where we decide to call and villain's range is polarized and we don't care that much if we block the best or the middle best combos of the opponent we really are considering our bluff catchers and we only know how many of better combos we block and how many of the weaker combos we block so uh, this tool is, uh, is very good for that. Whereas if we go again to the out of position player and for example we can decide what are good bluffs in here. So let's focus on the nothing part of the villain's range and see strategy and DV and we can see which cards are the best bluffs. So first of all we see here that hearts are not particularly good bluffs and the question is why and to understand we would like to see basically which of our holdings um, are blocking calling and folding range of the villain so for example I can go here to bet and now I want to see blockers for OOP and in the configuration I can decide uh, whereas for inactive player do I want to see blockers versus top and bottom of the range as before or blockers versus each action and here it's recommended to select this um, show blockers versus each actions range because when we're deciding whether a hand is a good bluff or not um, then we basically want to know how many of our villains call range we're actually beating so we want to block as many of his calls as possible and we don't want and most definitely we do not want to block his fault so so let's see uh, maybe we can remove that and we can see how does this block look like and, and we can see that indeed all of our hard combos are blocking folding range of the villain which means that the villain here has a lot of missed flash draws that he will fold now and our best bluffs should not block these uh, combos we can also look at some some other uh, details here for example why is so now we want to see strategy in dv we want to ask a a question uh, strategy in dv for nothing for example why for example 5-4 has higher EV for bet than 7-5 and again in, under, in order to understand it we can go here look at the blockers and we can see that 5-4 is blocking 10% of faults in opponent's range whereas 7 of heart and 5 of heart is blocking 14% so it blocks much more um, so that's pretty much it. We can also look for a moment here on this uh, blockers configuration thing. 
So yeah, uh, basically for both players you can define if you want to see blockers versus top, bottom of the range and bottom of the range or blockers versus actions range or, or full range in, uh, in particular for the action player. So my default uh, when I'm not, I was analyzing some hands was to always use blockers versus top and bottom for the active player and the blockers versus each action range for the inactive player. Um, so here are these e equity fr thresholds which you can adjust um, depending on a spot. So for example, if the value range has some lower equity, um, then you can specify the threshold somewhere else. And, and the, just the last minor thing to notice here is this color magnification. I set it to five in here. So, so the idea is, let me, for example, remove square size proportional, is that, um, so these values here are quite small. So if the hand is blocking like 20% of the range is already quite small. Uh, so for example, if I do not use color magnification that all of these colors look um, bleak. So, so the colors of the blockers we've seen here, um, so here in particular, when we, are ha we have a block versus action, then uh, we have one bar which is showing how big part of the call range we're blocking and how big part of the fold range we're blocking. And the color intensity is a um, mix between a white and a fold color. And it's mixing 16% of fold and like 83% of white. Uh, but because these values are so small and we want to be, to see them more, um, like more, more visible, more intense, we can set it to some higher number. And then if, if I set it to five, it looks it then the color magnification means that instead of 16.9%, we are showing 60.9 times 5% um, of white. So for example, if I would set it to 10, then any hand that has a blocking value higher than 10% will be showing here as fully, uh, fully fold color. And even these hands which are folding like, uh, which are blocking like 7% of a color range uh, are, are greenish. So you can choose this magnification to suit your preference. I found five uh, being good for me. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it I wanted to show in this video. I hope you'll enjoy this feature and thanks for watching.